Last time I was fishing with Chris Whitney, Chris hooked a muskie. It's the first time I ever saw a muskie get hooked. I don't know if it counts if it's in the boat or not when it literally flies over the boat. His hook set are so massive that the muskie wasn't a giant, but like a 30 incher, literally went hook set, airborne, flew over the boat, came off midair and landed. And if you give a fish a high five, does that count as a catch? <laughs> Chris Whitney has caught more muskies on this lake than anybody, a lot more than I have, and anybody that I know. So I'm excited to get out here in the boat with him. Typical walleye guy, fishing with a multi-species guy. I musky fish a little bit, get into it more here with Leisure Outdoor Adventures. 112,000 acres, there's a lot of, make, a lot of muskies in this lake. And uh, we're getting out here to just try to catch a few for you guys on, on film to see what this guide life's all about, and more importantly, show what musky fishing, current musky fishing is with the way the lakes are changing, technology's changing. We're gonna to try to put some fish in the boat, old school, new school, and show you what it's all about. I'm Toby Gavali Vlog, this is Chris Whitney. This is our life, it's the guide life. Go, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Guiding, while to some people on the outside it might seem like a glamorous thing, it's a lot of work. But every time somebody steps into my boat for a guide trip, it's it's their trip. This is their trip. And spending the day on the water with people, it's, just, it's really a dream come true. It's just a truly special experience. Setting the hook, netting the fish, high-fiving people, and that's truly the passion. What drives me is fishing different species and making memories with people. It's, it's a phenomenal thing. And that's what keeps me coming back. That's what fuels my fire for guiding. Every day is something new and seeing the smiles on people's faces when they catch that personal best makes it all worthwhile. And I love watching kids get addicted to uh, fishing. We are a family. Between all of us, we spend countless hours on the water. And at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the people that were in your boat learned something and enjoyed that experience and made some memories along the way. Get him. There you go. Got him. Got him, boy. Oh, nice one. Right there. Beautiful fish. 31 in two, baby. Woo, woo, woo. What a beautiful looks like musky, those spots. Oh, Got it. That's a big tip. For the release. <laughs> the Guide Life with Leisure Outdoor Adventures is brought to you by these great partners. Head out here, we'll stop at a couple spots where there's some fish that are, have been suspended, suspended a little bit. We'll look right away. We'll give it no more than two spots in 30 minutes. If they're there and they're active, we'll keep doing it. If not, we'll go find some weeds and go old school. Last this week, this week there's been a couple windows midday where there's suspended fish just push out off the weeds and steep breaks and. They're sitting there high in the water column, they're ready to feed. I think they're feeding on tis Cisco's yeah. tulabees, but they're not in super shallow water midday. But more than not, we're getting bites midday. Haven't really tried it right away in the morning, but as you know, Cisco's tulabees move up in the water column and down at low light periods. Oh, yeah. And that's kind of what they're waiting for. So we'll check, check them right away and then we'll go fish weeds. We got a major, it's happening right now. It's gonna be done in like 40 minutes, 30 minutes. We got a mid midday minor and then we have a major again five to seven tonight. So hopefully we can get one, maybe two, sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that should be a good day. I'm yeah, excited. So it'd be a good day to go explore the lake because you know I've been stuck pretty close here to to Walker on this side of the west side of the lake. And I know you like to fish the main lake too and I just haven't been out there that much. 
yeah. you know, for whatever reason, the fish haven't pushed up this year. I think the current bite situation is, I think now it's starting to happen. The fish are finally pushing up, but they've been shallow, they've been out, they've been doing this two step, yeah. two steps in, one step back or vice versa. And, and uh, they just haven't set up in a pattern really that's been solid for the entire summer. Yeah, they've been real scattered. Yeah. Yeah, one day you hear that there's sand going, the next day there's some, maybe a few fish coming up or rocks, maybe deep edges. Yeah. Some weeds are going, then you go there the next day and there's nothing happening, but. It's gotta move around and hit it all. One know. thing for sure is they don't have wings. No. And they don't fly. No. So here somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in this small little lake of 112,000 acres, there's several muskies and there's a few big ones. Oh, yeah, I heard there's some big ones out here. Yeah. Chris has had a pretty amazing spring, and I, you know, we got some too. But uh, have you ever had a year where you've caught more muskies over 50 inches to not, start the year? Not currently. You know, this has been a banner start to the year. A lot of big fish. Your son Chase got one. How big? Chase got a, one a little over 53. That's just a monster. That's a monster. So if we can get one that's uh, even the right color, I'll be happy today. <laughs> I don't care how big it is. Oh yeah. Big or small, we'll take them all. We will. Right? We'll yep. take them all. So, but it's fun. Let's get out there and get some. Let's do it. I'm an old hockey guy, so anytime I can incorporate some hockey into my boat. I had a guy ask me today if those were the only three shutouts I ever had. I was a goalie. <laughs> so. So where are they? I don't think I had three. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have? When we find a fish, what interference there is on here is from my side imaging. Okay. So I can cancel it and it's pretty much uh, no longer an issue. So I have this set with 30 feet in the deepest, even though we're in 40 feet right now. That's why you don't see bottom. Yeah. Again, I won't, I won't cast at a fish deeper than this line. Sure. It's gotta be above there for me to cast at it. Just knowing that fish in general, just like humans, have to deal with pressure in the water. Not all fish, trout, lake trout don't. What, white fish too, please don't, but walleyes, muskies certainly do, and muskies get pretty tired out. So it's very important that uh, this technology is is used properly. Like right. There's no, there's no doubt that there's, there's some uh, advantages to it. There's also a risk with it if you don't know. Yeah, you gotta be smart about it. There's a walleye or pike. That's with in the great right water technology column, comes great responsibility. That's not the one we want, but that's, that's a fish ten feet down, going across the screen. This little cup right here is head. A few fish on it. Yeah, they like this little cup in there. This is what I was looking at. This bait fish. So that bait fish was traveling up. Now it's going back down. That's 80 feet away. Definitely not a fish. False alarm. That happens. Lots of bait. There. That's there what I was looking at. Is that more bait? Do you have yours set up so it's shooting uh, opposite way the pole's pointing then? Yeah, I'm using the arrow. I'm yeah. not, not like Merv. And me. What? My brain doesn't work that way. So grab that Poseidon for me. It kind of looks like a fish. So what I do is I'm lining my arrow up. Looks like it's right at that tower. Try to lock it in, but it's gonna turn on me.
first cast, man. Let's make it happen. I don't think I think that's also a baited cloud. Because now there's only one little. Oh, there it is. Those are walleyes. Two of them. This is a school of muskies. Now that's getting pretty deep. We'll watch those fish, but that looks like the right size. Let's see what he does. Yeah. Got the concept. There's another piece of technology people have. It's called a trolling motor. Not only is it quieter, more stealth, and also keep your boat actually in one position instead of driving around in neutral, putting 200 hours on your motor. So we're gonna try to use one of those advanced tactics. Chris, I like sarcasm. Oh yeah. And uh, hopefully I have a remote control. The technology. Yeah. You know, the, the more what confidence you get in what you're looking at. Fish looks like. Yep. Pounds, yeah, well the walleye you know. tournaments are all being one with it. Bass tournaments are being one with it. Crappie, everything. PMTT just banned it, yeah. right? Um, which is an interesting topic, right? Like, the question is why? Why did they do it mid-season? Why would they do it at all? Um, it'd be interesting to get the uh, thoughts behind it. You know, you've read it up on it a little bit. Um, so there was a tournament one. I don't know what the facts are, but a guy caught several muskies on a very few casts, right? Yeah which is kind of what we're currently doing. We're just looking for fish that are somewhat active and saving our energy. It's not 10,000 casts, it's one cast to the right fish at the right time. So is that an advantage? Um, well, just like walleye fishing, it's an advantage. That's the point of technology and advancements with society, right? Like we, we have 60 some inch screen TVs now. And when I was a kid, I had to go change the TV manually for my parents. And now we have forward-facing sonar. So whether you're a Hummingbird guy, Garmin guy, or I'm a Lowrance, this forward-facing sonar allows you to scan for fish, find them more accurately, throw your bobbers at them, throw your pr presentation, whatever it may be, finding muskies in the weeds, shallow, out off the break. Um, it's certainly an advantage. So what is the thought? Is the thought it's dangerous for the fish if they're out deep water, is that why they ban it? Or is it simply, it's too easy and you can find more fish. Like that's the question. I don't know what the what the deal is, and everybody can purchase it. So that's to me, that's the one question. Like, well, technology is here to stay. Is it is it because it's not an advantage and disadvantage to the fish? Like, is it too too special of a creature because there's not like millions of them, right? Why? Why did they Why did they change it when the other tournaments aren't changing it? And it's legal. It's available for purchase. If you see the lake system it happened on, it was a smaller water, so a big lake like Leech Lake, uh, you want any, you know, advantage, advance, advance you can get, you know, advantage. Uh, you get to a smaller lake and you can, you can cover a lot of water. Um, you can really, you can just drive around the lake and look for fish without knowing the history of the lake. And I think a big part of the argument are the guys that have spent 20 or 30 years learning a lake and uh, a guy can come in with this new uh, advancement of technology and realistically within a few days can cover the majority of a, a lake if not all of it and it you know that's a big part of the argument it's kind of old school versus new school some guys want to just cast a spot you know looking for followers looking for signs and the next guy wants to save his energy and not beat himself up right and look for it so i mean you, you can argue both sides um, yeah so really, I think technology in general becomes um, change. People are afraid of change. Yeah. Two, it changes the playing field when it comes to tournaments. I remember when Spotlock first came out yeah. for tournaments. You know, ch walleye fishing, my, historically, that's what I fished. Uh, you could get in line and your presentation, if better than the other anglers, you'd beat them in a tournament. Yeah. Now it's more so about what technology you're running and your boat number because you can get to the spot on the spot hit spot lock and you can literally cut everybody else off yeah. right so if you're using this technology whether it's whether it's walleye fishing bass fishing musky fishing if you're on a structure 
where the fish are sitting and you're trying to wait them out, you can find them like you're saying with this and then you can use a spot lock and you can own that structure. Yeah. So does that make you a better angler than everybody else? I don't know if it does, but your, your, uh, your technology allows you to own a specific fish. So if we find a fish today with musky fishing with forward facing sonar, as long as we hit spot lock and stay by that fish, nobody else can really get in and get a chance. Yeah. I have a problem with that. I really do. Uh, as far as the technology itself goes, used in the right hands, like I'm, I have my screen set at fish, you know, at a zoom level that the fish, the only fish we can fish are fish that are shallower than 25 feet of water. And I know that the fish that are biting here are gonna be even higher than that. Like that one at 15 feet. Yeah, you know, so one argument that, you know, can go with the forward facing sonar is just because you can scan the lake, look for fish in real time, you have to know where to look. Yes. You know, you, especially on a lake the size of Leech Lake, Mille Lac, some of these big bodies of water, Lake of the Woods, you have to know where to start your search. And secondly, you have to know how to catch these fish. Correct. So there's a couple of things that, you know, this fish finder can't do for you. you Absolutely. Know? You have to get in the right place, right time, right presentation. Um, so just because you have it, does it? You could give this to ten people, and you're going to get ten different results. One guy is going to hit it out of the park, and one guy is going to take it off his boat and sell it and say, "I don't, I don't like how you know, this is compared to whatever he's currently running." So, you know, there's a lot of sides to it. Yep, and you totally, you totally can waste a lot of time using it. Like yeah. when you're looking, especially like a muskie, you're like, we're currently trying to find a fish that's off a break, suspended, but we're not casting at all. And, and I know for a fact that there's fish that are maybe up in the water column under the surface that I'm not seeing, that we might be just boating right by, right? And the same with up shallow in the weeds. Fish might be in the bottom and there's not a lot of separation. Well, if they're in the top few feet, they're in the deep, uh, thick weeds, maybe they're hiding on the backside of a boulder you're going by. Yep. Like you will not see every fish. You still got a fish, yes. You know, so yeah, you know, it doesn't show you every fish in the water. It will show you a lot. Just, it really shines when fish get off structure, suspend, you know, sit off brake line. That's really when it's shining, you know. Um, yep. If fish are sitting up in the shallow sand, I would argue the point that side imaging is probably equally as effective um, in finding and marking those fish. 100%. You know, so it, it's, it's a tool, you know. Yeah. It, it, there's not one tool that does it all. You need all the tools in your bag. And when we're out here five to seven days a week like we are, you know, taking customers out, trying to give them that trip of a lifetime, we want the advantage on our side. You know, we don't want to waste their time. Uh, we want them to have a great trip and you know we go off feedback from you know the people we fish with too and uh, some are for it most are some would rather not do it and you know you don't have to we could take this out of the boat and still go musky fishing as usual you yeah know? so oh, absolutely we're not just relying on this to catch a fish we've caught hundreds of fish before these were ever on our boats so right. this is just something to help and you have to use it right, you know, like you said, if you guys are wasting hours sometimes sitting on a fish because they know it's there, where in the past they would just fish through a spot and look for active fish. So right. you still have to have your instinct as a, as a fisherman um, to make it happen. Yep. Well, and, and whether, whether we like it or not, um, it's legal. So as we found out, um, there's a huge difference when you're putting clients on fish. Yeah. Right, and whether we're musky fishing and people aren't maybe great at casting, um, we can assist in casting. Whether it's a bobber fishing for walleyes, uh, our competition, other guide systems, people, and, and fishermen in general are all using it. Oh, yeah. So if we're not using it, we're at a disadvantage, and we want to make sure we give our customers every advantage there is. So, 100%, the technology is here to stay. I don't see it leaving the bass market, walleye market, and it's not leaving the musky market. And and they have bigger systems for saltwater. Their guys that are winning billfish tournament have five, twenty thousand dollar units on their boat that they can see fifteen hundred feet or more. It, it's just it's not going anywhere, and it's changed. And I don't think just like underwater cameras when they came out, like that was going to be the end of fishing. 
Um, this certainly gives the advantage to the angler in a sense of finding fish and putting your presentation in the, in the strike zone. But again, ultimately catching a fish comes down to one thing, is the fish going to eat or not? Yeah. And that's up to them. No, that's exactly right. Stop into Ray's Sport and Marine today to check out our remaining 2022 in-stock inventory or place your 2023 order with guaranteed price lock until September 1st. After September 1st, prices are subject to change, so now is the time to reserve your new boat. From tillers to side councils and full windshield models, we sell them all. Our sales and service team is here to help you get on the water. Ray Sport and Marine, 896 Northeast 1st Street, Grand Rapids, Minnesota. Just a little boat's turning, go to the left, right there. Whether we're here or shallow, it's not gonna change a whole lot. When they're active, they're active. Yesterday, yesterday we were in five feet of water fishing traditionally with a uh, with a top water top water bait. Missed a, had a fish blow up on a bait. Circled back five minutes later. The same fish ate. We hooked it. We lost it. But that was 30 minutes up shallow. 30 minutes later, we were out off an edge deeper and we caught one. And that was during the minor yesterday. So that tells you when the fish are active, they're active, whether they're shallow or they're deep. Now, sometimes there's, there's different times and there's different windows outside of the moon phases. But in general, when the fish want to eat, it's across the board. So whether you're fishing deep or shallow, that's the deal. And so right now we're off an edge again and there's a fish here 20 feet down or whatever it is. And, and uh, didn't even look at a bait really. And I'm guessing if we were casting shallow, it'd be pretty slow right now too. Moving. We are moving. So the minors or the majors over. We kind of got with with. We probably had about five minutes of that this morning. That first cast was the end of it. And now we have kind of the grind time, as they say in musky fishing, which you can catch them during it, right? You never know. But the odds are, if we're going to catch one predictably, it'll be whatever that time frame was around uh, around noon today. I think is the minor. Yeah. So. Let's go find some and then go pick the hottest one. And we still got some mine. clouds, so I won't oh, roll yeah. out the morning by it. Yeah, and, and we got a little chop. You'll come right over it. Should I let it sink a bit or? It's, you're, right, you're going right over its head at that level. Two more pumps are going to be by it. It's falling by it. This one's going to go over it. It's on it. Lazy follow. Still coming. That's a walleye. A big walleye. There's his buddy. There was two of them. That's what happens sometimes. You get, you get walleyes that are 24 inches and bigger, they're about as big around as a 30, 38, 40 inch. Oh yeah, or, big, or bigger. Yeah, when you get two of them together, they look like a big giant object. We caught, doing this, we've caught multiple walleyes over 26 inches using big rubber just in the last week. Oh, Bonus yeah. fish. Oh yeah. Nobody hates reeling in, but when you can just boat flip a 28 inch walleye, it doesn't seem right. Oh, trust me. 
We have caught so many big walleye, just, just musky fishing in general. Kind of doing the multi-species thing will actually help you learn. You know, we may be musky fishing, but you can learn a lot about walleyes, you know, pike, bass, certain fish by doing this, you know. Learn like, a ton of spots. You'll yeah. find sometimes those fish aren't aren't where you think they would be. You know, guys think those walleyes are sitting on the ledge. Well, some are sitting in three to six feet of water. The next one's suspended 10 feet down. So it, it definitely opens your eyes to, uh, you know, fish location that, that's very untraditional to, to what most people think, you know. So you just, if you stay observant, you can, you can learn a lot doing this, you know, about more than just the muskie or walleye or whatever you're targeting. Because how many of our, our muskie buddies are telling us about the water, the muskies they see in the walleye yep. spots and yeah. they're picking them up on whether it's side imaging or, or the live scope, you know, so you just stay observant, you know. Ultimately, the food chain will stick together. You start finding the big walleyes are eating a lot of the times the same stuff the big muskies are eating, you know, very often out here. We've caught, I've caught walleyes that have spit up 14 inch tulipies in the net. You know, same stuff a muskie would target. So yeah, sometimes that's a good indicator. If you're seeing big pike or big walleyes, they're, you know, they're feeding on the same stuff as muskies. So, oh, I'm used to it pointing another way. See where I'm looking? Yeah. How far down was it? You're perfect. Start working it hard. 10 feet, coming over them right now. Got a follow going. That too, that's 100% of muskie. You can see how long it is. It's kind of breaking up now, but let's see if I can get back on them. 100%. And that fish was just a slow reaction. I mean, he turned, he was curious, but no eat. Not even close and it doesn't matter what we throw i can empty the tackle box and we'll get the same reaction right now but if you come back here in that minor or major you probably can't keep it away from them drop it right now chris jerk it see that zero reaction he might turn and kick his tail and sniff the water like that but that's what fish do. That same fish this morning at 5 a.m. before the storm was coming might have just ate a one pound sucker and now it's just sitting there digesting food. So when you have good spots where you know there's muskies and you're casting, you're getting zero follows, all that stuff's going on, it's exactly what's happening. And that's a good muskie right there. It's a good sized fish. So can you catch them all because you have forward facing sonar? Absolutely not. Can it help learn the area where fish are hanging out and how to pr present your bait? Yes, absolutely. But ultimately, it still comes down to the muskie. Direct hit. We got a pattern going here. Uh, fish are not. Well, I guess the Chris had one that was kind of active, but not going for the uh, suspendo game. Not yet. My guess is it'll be a little bit later in the afternoon. So we're going to forget about technology and go pound sand. In this case, weeds. Casting, 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 covering water. Now it becomes the fish 10,000 casts because we're not going to look for them. We're just going to fish. We'll see if it all produces. Chris, shallow weeds, what are you going to go with? Uh... Top water, maybe a little trusty bulldog. There you go. Stepping undecided on that. I do like top water in these mornings, you know, calm out. So when I've talked to guys, when fishing shallow water, covering water, I like to change the pace up in the boat. Yeah. Um, tell me what you think. Um, but what I've heard and have tried is I try to have the fastest bait going first. If there's three people, then maybe a medium, maybe a little bit lower in the water column, the second bait in the boat, assuming we're moving forward. Yeah. And then the back one a little bit slower. Do you yeah. try to do that or do you just, depends on how the boat's moving, I suppose. Yeah, for me, um, the big thing is I just start out with different baits, you know, different speeds, like you're saying. I, I like to just start with different baits, you know, something and something steady like a bucktail, um, bucktail or topwater, and then something a little more erratic, you sure. know, usually following that up, 
um, whether it's a bulldog, rubber bait, jerk bait, you know, um, just give them different looks. And as soon as you start getting a follower or two, then I'll adjust. And at times we'll have three of the same bait, but otherwise mix it up, you know. Right. And, um, yeah, there's theories on, you know, the loud noises, a faster bait, something kind of waking that fish up essentially on that first bait through, you know. Sure. I, I like to put my, whatever I think's in the best bait, I like to put right out front, you know. There's an active fish, give them that, that shot, and then more jerk baits and stuff behind it, you know, for those fish that just don't want the traditional bucktail or whatnot, so. Yeah. So you tell me what you want to throw, and then we'll dictate where you go in the boat. All right. I'll try a topwater. Okay. All right. And I'm going to do, a, then, then I'll put you in the back so you can work it a little bit deeper and I'll burn a bucktail off the front. All right. That works. All right. Sounds good. Yep. Now what color? So going to... Ish. <laughs> Signs of life. Don't catch many of those on bucktails. Not speed reeling. Developed from the latest technology, Blackfish Technical Apparel outperforms, so anglers have gear that they can trust in, no matter the conditions. Uh, the Lowrance, it's running over, it's running like three amps per hour. So when I have two big screens on, now I'm gonna turn the front one on so I can fish out of the front. Um, that's like two and a half, two and a half, and three and a half. That's like eight, nine amps per hour. So to conserve energy, I have a lithium battery, 125 hours, so I'm not too worried about it. But I'm gonna shut off that extra power since we're not using it. Just to, something to think about when you're using that. A lot of people have run their batteries dead through you know, a regular lead cell battery in a day, six, seven, eight hours, and their batteries are dead because they leave them on all the time. With lithium battery, it's not so much a concern. It's, again, it's 125 hours, so we'll have to fish 12 hours with everything on to kill it, but it's something that's smart, and it's less sound going in the water. So I'm gonna kill that battery, shut off my active target, and just go side imaging and 2D. See how it works. Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to share a little tip with you. Um, you, whether you're fishing long days like we are fishing, you know, just various conditions. One, that's one of the biggest things we face is just the weather. Uh, right now, middle of summer, hot. Uh, th this morning was thunderstorm. So, you know, with uh, Leisure Outdoors, we have Blackfish Gear as a sponsor, and it's something we use on a daily basis. Uh, as you'll see, me and Toby, we have the the hooded shirts on. A lot of people think they're going to be hot. You know, they see the long sleeves and the hoods, but they're not. They're super comfortable and it, you know, save your skin, especially if you're out here day after day. Uh, we have some gloves, you know, fingerless gloves we'll wear here. 
you know, just to protect the hands while we're fishing. You know, we started out the day with the rain gear, um, and now it's 90 degrees, you know, and we're kind of, you know, we're covering up. So, you know, just if you can bring a few of those things, it'll make things a lot more comfortable in the boat for you. It'll make you stay out longer and, you know, maybe get that bite you would have missed if you had to go in. You got anything on that, Toby? No, I think you're spot on. I mean, like you said, they they pretty much make a, a garment for everything when it comes to when it comes to sun protection and and uh, and uh, weather gear. You know, just chance of rain, warm stuff, the insulated bibs and things that they have, the pants and the, the soft shell stuff, and then of course the rain suits are phenomenal. I've had a couple of different suits now over the over the years, and uh, stuff stays dry and it's comfortable. Like you said, you don't get hot; they're breathable yeah. and uh, it's a phenomenal product. We're lucky to have them. Yeah, very lucky. It's coming right by it, isn't it? Oh! <laughs> it wasn't even moving on there yet no it wasn't after you did that it, yeah the speed 60 feet straight pretty much straight forward yeah, little, no, a little right. right yep just passed it oh he's chasing it it was a weird bite. It definitely hit it. Yeah, that's what mine did. I don't think it's a giant fish, but something right in front of that boat. How far? It's 80. Maybe a little left here. Pretty close. I don't see your bait. All right. Drop it. Real. It's coming hard, it's coming hard, super hard. Oh, you see that? It's gonna follow you all the way to the boat. Yeah, there it is. A musky? Yep. Yeah. It's right under my bait right now. He spun back around, he's right, I can still see it. About a 42. Sitting there. Throw, throw it out 20 feet in front of you and let it sink. It's just sitting there. Another drop. Get there, real. Let it fall. Real. Turned him. It's coming up. Coming harder now. I'm gonna get a follow again. See him? No. It's 15 feet down right there. Shoot. About a 42 or so. That looks more promising. I like this. I like the look. We're gonna get this one. Is it going down? It's coming for you. Oh, he's, he's, he got there it. There we go. <laughs> Musky, Walla. I don't know, but I got him. Feels like a little musky, maybe. Yep. Oh, big walleye. Holy that is giant. A that is a monster walleye. <laughs> that thing, that looks like a freaking 32 inch. It's now. a big one. <laughs> oh. Did you get that on there? He's on hook too. That is a mega, that might be the biggest walleye I've seen come out of the Leech Lake. How fat it is. 
Uh, it's a giant walleye. <laughs> I feel like that thing's over 10 pounds. How many players are in my bag right there? So fat. Like that's a healthy fish. That's gotta be a 30 inch walleye. If not, it's close. That is a monster walleye. It's heavy. Look at that big bad boy. <laughs> it's not quite the muskie we're looking for, but I tell you what, active target or forward facing sonar, you can reach out there and touch a lot of different species. And when they're facing you like that, they don't look much different than a 40 inch muskie, you know? Yeah. That's, a, that's a big one, healthy fish. Yeah, something to measure Reach lake. Them with. Right there in that, next to the H on the blackfish sticker. Pull that out. Right. I'm gonna go with a 28 and a half. No. We need more stuff. You think it's bigger than that? Yeah, I'm going with 30. 31, maybe. That's healthy. 31 and a quarter. Yeah. That's a big heavy. That's a 10 pound fish. You don't see a lot of those on Leech Lake, but. No, that may be the biggest I've ever seen come out of Leech Lake. Big bait, big fish. Oh, yeah. 31 inch, baby! Woo, woo, woo! Chris, you're up. You can get a 40 inch musky. I'll take that 31 inch ball. <laughs> Two. We'll cast at that one right now. 60 feet in front of us. You want a front of this kind of tunnel, man. Keep railing. Keep railing. Drop. Go. Got, Got it. it. That's a big fish. Oh. You did not. <laughs> There's two of them there. Look at what it did to my snap. That was no walleye. No, I know it wasn't. I could see it. It opened. The other one came to it. I wasn't even moving it. I know, it ate it falling. If that would have stayed on it, would have ripped that bait off of there. Whitney! Hey, remember I talked about hook sets? They're way too strong, these pipes. Last <laughs> year I saw him flip one over. He just set one so hard he opened his snap. Yeah. I Good got, Lord. I get you think control. that was a muskie? Oh yeah. 100%? Big heavy fish. We're getting closer. 31 inch walleye, big heavy muskie. Oh. There was two of them there. We're getting closer. We're due. We're due. <laughs> Let's get another one. Forty. Yep. How deep was it? I'll tell you when they're real. Just let her drop. Or that's fine. Now it's coming up hard. Got it. Oh, nice jump. Little guy, but it's a muskie. Like a 34 incher. Yeah. There we go, buddy. Right away. Totally watched go. him eat on there too. What a crazy monkey. Heck yeah. I almost thought you were gonna flip him over the boat again. You know, I was going for it, but I didn't <laughs> want to hit the cameraman, so I kind of, Oh. so cool, man. That's so crazy. We're sitting there down in the dumps. You had one on, like we missed our moon. Just lost a like, nice one. Let's go up here. Like there's a couple we saw some this morning and there's one up here too. So maybe that, that'll be the next one. But yeah. we're like, should we go in for lunch? Chris got to get his boat from an oil change. Yeah. I'm like, oh, let's just go up and check it. And side imaging, saw it, waypointed it, backed up. I was just saying, you can actually rewind it. Oh, touch yeah. screen. Yeah, he, he rewound it, took a coordinate, one cast, 40 feet out. Let it drop, boom. 
launch nice work of the air. hey big or small we'll take them all we will take them all we're on the board must go launch that thing went airborne like 360 oh. that was a sweet sweet eat sweet jump he's already unhooked we need a players i suppose no he's unhooked oh nice let's just get a quick look at it get a quick look at it and let him go we don't have to do any crazy maybe get a photo quick get this it's nice to have this big butterfly net clam net is sweet what a beautiful leech leg musky those spots it's not a super tanker by any means but no, it's, it's a nice a musky yeah it's like you know 34 inches or so you get a, a nice bigger. nice healthy fishery like this you'll get small fish you'll get big fish they're not all giants but... no and you never know right it's the fish of 10,000 casts but yeah. sweet fish sweet eat we're on the board things are happening <laughs> yeah. at least I'm not yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. Don't get much better in that. After losing a nice feeling fish, it's nice to... Get a bite yeah, going. You want to get big fish, but you know what? Honestly, it's we'll take any size, you know. Well, we uh, we don't have the best conditions, and we were in between bites. We talked about the minor. Minor was pretty much spot on. Like we had action during that time. Yeah. We had one big bite, caught a big walleye, had a couple other little ones that we missed, um, and now we have three hours till the major. Yeah. So we're talking about real, literally going to her lunch or going to get your oil change, and yeah. now I'm jacked up and I want to keep fishing. Sometimes you just gotta tough it out, you know these. You can be down in the dumps in one cast, it boom. It don't take long, 10 seconds. Yeah. You know, zero to hero or zero to mid 30s. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. We're out here in 20 feet of water. That fish was down 10 feet. And uh, without technology, we probably don't find that fish. No. no. Super cool. That worked good. That was a sweet catch. You know, like you said, high sun. Conditions aren't ideal. You no. Know, we're off the, the off the moon phases, but. We tried to talk you into going in for a burger, and he said, hey, let's get another spot, well, and I'm glad, wait, I'm glad you're the you, captain. No, I am a bacon cheeseburger connoisseur, and there's absolutely no chance you'd have to twist my arm to take a break and go sit in and have a Diet Coke and a, a burger and fries. Like, there's zero chance. I would have been right there, yeah. but like, uh, we got to catch a fish. Yeah, we we got a shoulder to do. Yeah. And now we got to get a big one, yeah. and that would be super sweet. And if we don't, it's okay. Hey, we we, uh, go, we got a point to, uh, we got to make a point to catch a few fish and yeah. show how technology works and, and the big controversy, right? Like. Oh, yeah. You know, is, is it cheating? I don't think it's cheating because it's you still got to fish and you got to know FLP, fish location presentation and know the moon and it's still the same deal. Like you might know there's seven, eight fish up on a flat. Why? Because you've been fishing it. Uh, you've been seeing fish, follows traditional fishing. Yeah. So if you go up there in the moon, you catch a couple, right? Like that's just really not the same. I mean, really not any different um, other than here we are chasing fish in a different location. Same fish, same presentation, oh, different I location. Yeah, and one of my first times actually doing this tactic with casting, and uh, we've drove at times for half an hour to an hour without seeing fish. Yep. We've casted at a few that would not budge. It it, it doesn't make them bite. It, it, from my experience, whether we casted a thousand times or kind of looked for fish, like they weren't coming easy doing this as opposed to normal fishing. Right. You know, absolutely. or we would have five in the boat right now. Oh, absolutely. You know? so yeah. It's it's still fishing. Uh, when they when they legalize spear gun hunting an active target, then, <laughs> then, then we draw a line. line. But yeah. right now it's just taking advantage of the resource and that is active target, a forward facing sonar. So I have active target with the Rants, yeah. Panoptics with Garmin and, and uh, Hummingbird has theirs too. So each brand has it, you know, whatever your Ford Chevy guy, whatever it is, like yeah. they, they have the technology out there and it's not going away. So no. learn how to use it, take advantage of it. Yeah, use it to your advantage, be responsible and uh, yeah. you still have to know how to find fish and and catch fish like we're already talking about. Absolutely. So. All right, let's see if we can get another one. Get another one. Sweet. Good job, Chris. We did the active target thing. We're after a muskie. We did catch a muskie, right? We're running through this major right now. It's afternoon. It's hot. I think there's something to this this moon deal, right? Like we have the moon, moon rise, moon set, moon overhead, moon underneath. And that's something that we talked about earlier. When it's when the conditions are less than perfect like they are today. You have to take advantage of those minors and those majors. We had a minor this morning around 11 o'clock. Uh, that's when we lost a fish, caught those big walleyes. Um, then you caught that muskie. That was kind of in between, a smaller one. 
Um, but now we have a major here. We got about an hour left. So we're gonna go one more fish. If we can find one more fish, great. Otherwise, it's been a fantastic day, right? Take advantage of those, take advantage, that's a tip. Take advantage of those, those peak fishing times, right? Hunting right. in game calendars, fish is the same way. Moonrise, moonset. You got sunrise, sunset. And uh, those are pretty peak periods, especially when the conditions are less than ideal. Now weather, weather probably trumps everything, right? When you have a front coming in after you've had stable conditions for a while. But, and of course, if you can combine weather with a major, and a moon, like a full moon, it's the best fish you can get. But you pick those majors, the fish will bite off and on throughout the day, walleyes, bass. But when you're going after those big, those big predator fish, it's the same with hunting. That's the time you want to be casting. So we've got a little bit of time left, Chris. We'll give it about a half hour, right? If we can find one more fish, maybe the fourth time will be the charm. Let's we'll get it. one in. If not, it's been a great day. Follow the moon, that's my tip. Say, it's what I do. <laughs> well, you did say at the start of the show you're kind of a walleye guy, you know. Like it's hard to shake it when you got it in your blood, man. Oh, why? <laughs> why can I be? You know what's so crazy is I'm so disappointed right now that I just caught like a, another trophy walleye, and I'm, I know that sounds bad, but we're trying to catch muskies, and it's all about to eat. It's all good. The tug is the drug. I don't think that quite that is big again. That Can I hold your fish, big. Toby? Is that all right? Holy cow. It is another one pushing over 28, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Cheapers. Oh, How we do it? Yeah. So, <laughs> just another active target fish right here. Another beauty. I don't know what that is. It's a big, big fish, but. Again, you know, the diameter, these things go off the density of a fish. That's what the signal is on forward facing sonar. That's, that's a big fish, you know. That's thick, you know, you for midsummer. I mean, that's a. Uh, oh, they're healthy. That's so much bait in the water. <laughs> that's another big one, and that one chowed it. Like, I felt it pull on it the first cast, went back, jigged her up, and. Uh, Beautiful fish. And thick, I mean, just almost a humpback. I just wonder how big of a bait do walleyes really eat, right? Like, that's a 10 inch. The side, and that's, uh, and that's a third up, of its size. So, spit up 14 inch tulip in yeah. the net, you know, they're not afraid of a big bait. A lot of guys are used to the little stuff. And... Well, so far, it's more of a walleye show than a musky show, but we got a little bit of both. Hey, but you know, it's still couple, it's days early yet. That was a cool walleye. Another cool eat. See you, buddy. So cool. Well, that was fun. Way to go, my man. Heck yeah. Gotta love it. Like, like that hit it too and the, the back hook got him so it hit him a little bit sideways coming in. I thought for sure that was a muskie because saw it eat, got the good hook set, the old 2B just bent right over and it was just solid. And then I thought, is that a smallmouth? Like we <laughs> talked about that, right? Like oh, yeah. what's next, a 26 inch smallmouth or something? No, 29 inch walleye. So it's a lot of fun. Forward facing sonar, another bite. Big fish, big baits, forward facing sonar. It works on a lot of lakes. It's pretty cool. So as you can see, Chris, come on back here. On my way. We gotta call Uncle. As you can see, we just uh, put a solid effort in. We still have a muskie sitting right below us, 10 feet down. Forward facing sonar helps you find them. But as we just played with this one for 10 minutes, threw everything in the tackle box at him, certainly doesn't make him bite. No. Narrows the water down, 112,000 acres down to you know, what do we fish today? A thousand yeah. plus acres and uh, found a few fish. Yeah. Uh, luckily we got some, we got some big fun fish. We got a couple of walleyes. You did catch that muskie you got. We dumped a couple. We're yeah. both guilty of that. We missed some bites, dumped some, but that's muskie fishing. But what a great opportunity. Thanks for coming with. We do have to say, you know, everybody, we were, we're missing one partner today. Yeah. You want to talk about that or? 
Yeah, we're missing uh, Tim Hansky, one of the fellow guides. He had uh, some events come up, so he wasn't able to make it and uh, extremely bummed out. So, you know, I just want to say hi to him and hopefully he can make it back out next year with us. So. Yeah, so we're, we're here on Leech Lake. We have Jeremiah Pipcorn fishes some muskies a little bit. He puts he put one in the boat this year. Jeff Anderson fishes muskies. He's he's not on Leech Lake much this year, but uh, you do and I do, you yeah. know, and, and Tim Hansky just lives and breathes smallmouth bass, northern pike, walleye, if it swims, and of course muskie, he wants to fish them. So we have a great group of guides. We have 11, 12 guides this year, yep. and uh, we got four or five to fish muskies. This is kind of what we do. We fish shallow, we cast, we fish deep, deeper, shallow over deeper yep. water. We control in the spring. Talk about that June, June fishing a little bit in case people are thinking about next year after they see this show. Yeah, you know, so June is an awesome time. Uh, you, you can get some casting in, but it's a great time for trolling. and. Uh, what we saw was it gave people who might struggle with casting, as far as kids or you know grandparents, the opportunity to bring in a fish. Um, good numbers of fish and some trophy fish are caught that time of the year. So um, it's a time where we typically are doing a couple on casting trips, maybe three, that varies, but uh, trolling, we can easily get three guys in the boat, spread the lines out, um, and it's just a great opportunity, you know. For anyone, any age, any ability, man, woman, child, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if, if you, if you uh, enjoy what you're seeing here today on this show or the next show, and tomorrow we're filming another show, we're doing the Guide Wars tomorrow yeah. on, a, on a certain said location that we don't know about yet, so yeah. that'll be a fun one to film too. But if you enjoy our show, make sure you please like and share and, and uh, with our YouTube and Facebook social media pages. Uh, we love doing this and we want to bring it to you as well, and that's important for us to, to uh, talk about our sponsors and, and share them as well. So please support us in the Guide Life because this truly is, cr Chris, it's, the guide life. It is. So it's what we uh, have. yeah, we, we talked about this morning. Do the fish bite before or after the storm? After today? Give us a recap. <laughs> you know, the, the muskies are gonna bite when they wanna bite. You know, you got some predictable windows, but at times when it seems perfect, it was quiet for us, you yeah. know. And honestly, between times we thought we would catch them is when we caught one. Uh, so, you know. You just, you gotta be patient with these muskies. You know, we don't catch them every day, but we can certainly put the odds, you know, in your favor big time. So uh, you just, you know, you just, you have to be willing to put in your time, you know. Yep, absolutely. And so, yes, well, you and I both talked, we feel a bit down about today's show and that we had some dump skis going on. Uh, but you know what? The tug is the drug. And after doing 500 and some days on this lake in 10 years, I got my biggest walleye today from Leech Lake. So sure did. I don't care how I caught it, 80 pound line or six pound line, yeah. that was a big walleye and, and, and we got a muskie. So yeah. great show, we had a great time and thank you very much for, for uh, doing, joining me and uh, next time we uh, get Tim in here with us too. Yeah. So thank you guys. Thank you. Leisure Outdoor Adventures would like to thank all their sponsors for their support in making the guide life happen.